And so now you go in the studio and you play produce, executive produce it. So, so. Uh, well, I met, the funny thing is, I don't know Lomax that long. Like Lomax and I were friends since about a year. Okay. Like uh, about a few months before Michael passed, I met this, I met uh, Lomax on Facebook because, you know, he posted a video that he, he had a gig on a boat, on a cruise, and he was playing Love Don't Live. And of course, you know, Babu, she needs to go there and come in to go like, oh, wow, that's Michael. I, I love the fact you play. So we started talking and um, that's how we met. And then he had a gig here in Zurich because he is from Zurich in a club uh, called the supermarket. They had the shelter party, soulful house, soulful vocal house party. That was my thing. I said, I'm coming. And so we started talking and that was about it. Yeah, everybody that twang is her thing. Ain't nobody else. It's her (laughs) thing. (laughs) So that's all I know from Lomax back then and then two months after we started talking you know and he sent me his sets and you know he was like how do you like this one and you know um michael passed and somehow he was the first one i called i said he passed and you know he would really calm me down and he was like you know and so i said you know what why don't you do the song. Why don't you produce a song? We, he was like, oh, hell no. He was like, no, nah, uh, uh-uh. I am not going to do it. I said, why? He said, because I have too much respect for Michael and I'm not really like a known producer. I'm not a long time producer. I just started. I said, I don't care because I know you will put your everything in it just because of the fact you're having that chance. And I trust, I believe in you. I trust you. Sure. He was like, nah, nah, I'm going to sleep over. I said, okay. Next morning I called him. I said, did he said, well, I said, I'm not sure. I said, I don't accept a no. Just do it. See, everybody, that that headstrong. Here here we go. (laughs) I don't accept a no. I don't accept a no. You're doing it. Well, you have to do it now. And I think he did a great job. That's what he, you know, he worked on it and, you know, he has a regular job. He did that by side. It took him 60 hours at the studio and he was done with the song. And I now, think he did a great job. Now the song is pretty much the third track he ever produced. He never produced before. You need to know this too. I mean, that's something really, it was his first really big track that he produced. And I think for this, he really did a good job. Right, okay. Spen? We're going to go to Spen in a minute. <laughs> yes, that's right. We're going to get him in in a minute. So keep going. So you now got the and track. And then I said, that's not enough. I <laughs> <laughs> Tony's laughing. I see Tony laughing too. Yeah. Going, of course, that's but, it's never enough. Yeah. About no, yeah. it's not. Because I said, once this song is out, we're done again. And then what? So I said, we need some remixes. So, you know, we can continue bring something out. and Or we get to remixes. Okay. Let's about you wanted to put the record at the right home. You felt a mm-hmm. home was needed. You wanted yeah. to put the things together, Michael Proctor, record label, and then it was discussions of remixes, but you needed a home first. So talk yeah. about no, that's not true. Yeah, of course I needed a home, but I first thought about when we bring it out, I need somebody to do a remix and bring it out with Lomas together. And for me, there was only one DJ, and I I I uh, I can say this very proud, and I stand behind. I am DJ Ben biggest fan. You can bet on it. I know like, that. Ben really brought me through. The I was whole jealous thing. over it. I said, "How dare you only be his fan? You don't and, love me, no, girl." I didn't say only his fan. I said, but Linda I mean, play records too. Linda knows. No, 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 no. I didn't say I'm only his fan. I said spread I'm love, his Lenny, not hate. Spread <laughs> love, buddy. Spread I love. said I'm his biggest fan because I said the same thing. Listen, I me. said the same thing when you said to me that was the right place. I said, yes, that's the yeah. right place. And that's the yeah. right brother to have yes. that right. Well, I'll let you tell the story. I'm making a joke out of it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I wrote Spen's wife. Okay. Beautiful Kelly. And I told her, I said, why don't you give this song a listen and ask Spen if he would do a remix? Because Spen was always my, I always wanted him to do that because 
I absolutely, for me, Spanish is the best gospel house DJ ever. And I wanted him to work on this or to at least, at least give it a listen. And so um, they listened to it. They were like, oh, this is Michael Proct. I said, yeah. And she was like, you need a home. And I said, yes. And that was actually what I really wished for. But I was just, I was not ready to ask because I was just, I just wanted the feedback first. And then, but she came to me and she was like, would you like to sign it with us? I said, definitely, definitely. And that's what we did. So it was, I didn't really have to send it around because, you know, we just went for quantize right away. It was the right decision. And that's yes. what I'm trying to spend now as being the label executive. I'm going to tell him to put his DJ headphone down and talk about when those tapes come in, a tape, sorry, when those MP3 come in and you see something like a Michael Proctor step to you, Ben, you know, what's that first initial reaction? What are you thinking? Spen? Did we lose Spen? Hello, Spen. Well, for the momentarily, we're going to see if Spen maybe stuck somewhere with because he's on the train maneuvering. We'll keep it moving, but he'll come back. Just hopefully he hears us. I remember this, though. The phone call a little bit before of us going to Quant, before you go into Quantes, was you asked what the opinions were. Because I know oh, you. Yes. I called you. Yes, you called me and you asked me what I thought. And I said, no brainer. Yes, I that's said, what you said. No brainer. I said, yes. it's like when you say two plus two equals four, you don't think, you just say yes and you yeah. do. And you, you know? told me, I said, should I sign it with Quantize? He said, you said, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do it, do it, do it. I said, well, actually, I already signed, you know, I but I you needed your opinion. <laughs> anyway, but you did yeah. it anyway. You, yeah. I, first of all, even if I decide to try to talk you out of it, I knew how much admiration you had for them as yeah. a label, yes. as a sound. I know what your page is about. Babu's House is about gospel house music. So it makes the most sense to say to her that he, this is perfect you nailed it you all the boxes in my and my thing was tick the questions were of course babu felt she needed to a and r it properly she and spends back so spend can you hear me now spend hello i see he's back anyway we'll make sure because we got to hear spend tell us what what happened but and the side note you have to understand something Everyone, when you have a piece of work like this, it's like a Picasso or, or you know, a Da Vinci type of work. And, and she's holding something that is dear to her heart. You know, this is her best friend's work. She, there was no way she was going to make this go any other way. She wanted the right people, the right place, the right time. So, of course, in the meantime, she says, I'm going to get remixes done. She goes and starts to talk to Tony, talks to myself, and there's some plans being done. She's doing what Babu does, facilitate. <laughs> <laughs> She's facilitating, <laughs> moving the mountains, and making everything go further. But we'll bring Spen back in a minute. So before I talk about my stuff, I'm going to I'm gonna shift over to Tony Carrasco because I'm then I'm going to go to Keith Kemper because Keith works along with me. Yes. And we'll talk. So yes. Tony Carrasco, let's unmute him, make sure. Yes, Tony. Tony, you know. Oh. You know. <laughs> How about it? Tony Carrasco, of course. <laughs> Tony, I remember as the one of the most legendary DJs that left New York and was blessed us to play studio in, in, in Italy and made a huge name, of course, in all the productions and stuff that he worked on. Um, so I was always saying Tony Carrasco is a perfect fit for the project because he's in his own right, a true legend and being true house stories. We like to hear. So Babu says, Lenny, I called Tony and Tony's going to do it. And then Tony will say, I'm not saying, and then Tony, I'm going to play your remix because I want people to hear it. Um, yeah. Maybe what we should do is first, because people want to hear music because I normally don't play music. Ah, he's back. Um, I want to play, I want to play Tony's remix. Tony, here we go, baby. Okay.
Okay. So let me <laughs> come back. Tony, go ahead, baby. Tell us your story a little about you because people need to know. They need to be mm -hmm. educated. So, of course, she mentioned Milan. So tell us where we know we come from New York. You take over from there. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm very happy to be part, part of this project. And um, with, with Quantize Records, DJ Spanling from Tanner, Lomax, Booker T, and Keith Kember, and of course, our queen, Balu. And um, we had did before the project, we did remember Day of Mike Proctor. And uh, that was a great, great, uh, I could say, family collaboration. We got a lot of DJs together on that. And I think that's where it really all started, you know. My association with Babu, Babu was my manager for many years. And I was blessed and lucky to meet Michael Proctor through her. So it was, when I met Mike, it was like, what? I mean, this is the guy from Urban Blues Project, right? So Furic. So when I met him, I was like, no, this, this can't be happening, you know? We hit it off. We were very close friends. We did a lot of gigs together. And for me, Michael was a mentor, you know, because I was doing a lot of productions and all of that. But when he came to doing Soul, Soul Full House, he was like very, like very precise, you know, and you couldn't really make mistakes when, when it comes to talking to Soulful Music with Michael Proctor. Michael was a kind, he was a gentleman, he was a brother, a father figure, everything you could think. He was just incredible uh, individual. So I have a lot of fun memories of him, and he will always be in my heart. I could never forget Michael Proctor. Sure. And I have to say something. This remix that I did of Forgot Love when, when Bobo called me, it was like I really didn't want to do it, you know? It was like, no, hell no, you know? I just but Bobo has an incredible energy. I, I've never met anyone like her. I mean, she's you like mean, you're telling them very persuasive. With the, no, with the no, she's very convincing, you know? When she That's feels something, she's Bobo that is rarely makes mistakes. When she's going to contact someone is because she's already figured out why she's contacting me, you know? So when she came to me, it was like, oh, I can't say hell no. <laughs> I couldn't say no to her, you know, but I really didn't want to do this, you know, because it was a, a huge project. So when she told me she signed it to quantize, I said, oh, my God. She had the whole, everything was just perfect. I mean, quantize record, the expense label is the top sofa house record label in the world. And so... It, it was a it was a huge challenge, challenge to do this project, but what kept me going was because before I did this record years ago, Michael had asked me to remix a record for him, and from that whole experience is where I had to be always on my toes because Michael was very very hard on me that he said, "Hey, you got to keep building, you got to keep building, you got to keep building," and so. I was getting frustrated at times because I was doing remixes. I, I did actually different arrangements and all that. But he was saying, no, you gotta keep building on that. You're almost there. You have a you have you're very close to having something perfect. So I really had a hard time understanding that, you know? So I always kept that thought in my brain when I did my productions, and I said, you know, to do this remix, I'm gonna go on those premises. How Michael used to always tell me, no, you got to keep building, you got to keep building, you got to keep building on that. So what I did was before I, I started working on the production, I, I took like three days to listen, listen to the Urban Blues Project productions, you know? And then I spent a week listening to Quantize records because I had to find a balance of soulful records and then... Michael was really about live musicians. He was really into this live thing, you know. In Zurich, he, was, he had a jazz band. He was doing this thing in Blue Note. He, he had an incredible, I think it was a quartet. So he was like, during the week, he was doing like jazz. And then on weekends, he was doing house, you know. So I remember from those experiences and those intercontents that we had, that Michael was this incredible A-list musician. He was a medalist, lyricist. And he was basically, you know, producing with, with whoever he was you know, working with. That's how Michael, he was extremely, extremely just, you know, really good. 
it was hard to make a mistake with Michael. So uh, when I did the I Got Love, I said, okay, let me just come up with some pre-demos. And I sent probably three pre-demos. And I said, which one you like, you know? And one was a bit of sulfuric, but we agreed that it would have been a problem because maybe Brian Tapar, who I want to say hello to, track stores, Mark Pomeray, we were great fans and big fans of theirs. Maybe they might have said, oh, you know, it's a bit too to our sound. So we decided to go with the first mix, which was the one I was feeling and she was feeling, which was uh, the one more or less that uh, came out at the end. But what happened was, I was excited. I was working on, on some of their solos and we did an organ solo and I sent just a part of the organ solo of the arrangement to Babu. And I never do that, you know? And it was just to get an idea where, was, where this track was going to go. And uh, she says to me, yeah, but what about the other parts? You know, I don't know. I just wanted you to hear just the organ solo. So I, I promised myself that I was not going to send anything until I completed this remix because Babu is... You know, she's also a good ear. She'll criticize you or she'll tell you what it is, but it's all good, you know? And that will help you just keep going and everything. So I had this thing of Michael always in my head, you gotta keep building, you gotta keep building. Babu, of course, the quantized record, you know, label. So it was a lot of things I was going against. So I was really working a lot on arrangements and I was also working a lot of uh, live instrumentation. So I had a guitarist on some of the stuff. I got uh, guys on horns, and then I actually played a live bass of a South African musician, but I wasn't so happy with it, so I had Thompson we do it on keyboard, you know. So I was going back and forth. So I get a call from Bob, hey, you know, we're on a deadline. we got to finish this mix. And I was saying, oh, Jesus. So, again, I, I was just going in and out of it. I just thinking on the premises, you got to keep building, you got to keep building. So then I said, you know what? All right, I think we got two good mixes. Let's finish this up. And I'm going to, you know, get this thing out on the deadline. I only had 10 days left. But literally, you know, I never told this to Bob, but I was working on a third mix, which I felt would have been really, really good. It was a dub mix. But, you know, I didn't have enough time. And I said, you know, all right, I think what we got here should be okay. And so we finished the mix. I did everything with my uh, collaborators. And, um... And then I got it the day before the deadline. So that was it, you know? And um, I'm very happy to be part of this project. Again, it was a big challenge, you know, and I used all my experiences and Michael was in my ear, Babu, you know, these are, this, this is the family, these are the people I was close with all these years. And so it, it came off to the way we should. I think Michael would have been very happy about it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I will That's make it. Says he's going. Yes, yeah. he will. Be. <laughs> Michael, for, yeah. uh, Tony, for those you know, can you can you tell some of the records over the years that were the standouts, so people can Google you and get like really ecstatic and go crazy. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, I did back in the day. This is something that a lot of people don't know. I did a lot of um, electronic stuff. You know. One of, one of the big records was uh, Climbing the Bureau Dirty Talk. And um, that's one of that's my big records, of course. That's an architecture. But I don't, you know, huh? No, I'm saying that record's a very important record to house to the to the birth of house music with the Chicago people. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't really dwell so much on that. It's something that was experienced in the past and it was great and all that. And um, I did. I had my strictly rhythm years where I did some pretty cool deep house stuff, you know, and I was really developing into doing a lot of things with them. But unfortunately, uh, the label they got sold, you know, and everything just, you know, you know about all of that. And so I started doing a lot of independent stuff with other labels. But I have to say, going back to my Italian years experience, it was just basically my. Uh, a way for me to be in a recording studio to just really uh, work on this craft because I was doing a lot of experimentation and a lot of this stuff was just experimental. I was just trying to be in the studio so I could learn the ins and outs of how to make productions, how to produce, how to mix. And I was working with some incredible people and I was doing a lot of, like I said, a lot of the stuff that we were doing back in the day was just basically, it was just a way for me to learn, you know. And yeah, but I apply my New York roots to some of the stuff. Bro, 
those experiences of yeah, like, and then some of the stuff I also use. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're from New York, and so I was, you know, I grew up with Paradise Garage, here in Larry Levan, Walter Gibbons, uh, Richie Kazar, c 54. So back in the day, there was in David Mancuso, we had like all kinds of music in the clubs. We would go from rock to pop to jazz to soul to funk to disco, you know? So when I, when I, when I was in Europe, in Italy, um, I tried to bring some of those elements into, at least when I was playing as a DJ, and then when it came to production, it was just basically, I was working with people that were coming off doing like really pop electronic stuff. And that was just a way for me to learn my, you know, uh, a way to be in the studio to work and to, to, to get those working hours to try and improve on the craft. So I was really blessed and very lucky. And it is always it would be in my heart, my second home, you know? Mm-hmm. So... That's amazing. I got to do this, Tony. Let me play the mix again. I want everybody to hear Tony. That says it all, bro. The New York barb is all Thank over you. that. Man, that New York barb is well Thank up. As I say it like this, he put his foot up in that thing. Michael, be happy for you, bro. But I gotta say something. I think we got a good product. I think the the Michael the Lomax featuring Michael Proctor. I got love. The first mixes with Booker T and Lomax were awesome. Then we got these remixes with Lenny Fontana, DJ Spen. And uh, uh, I believe it's Mark Cavineri. He's also an Italian musician, very, very, very. Uh, Michele Chiarini. Michele, right, right. Michele, right. Michele Cavineri was amazing talent. And I think this whole product is something that I hope the people who are listening, DJs, you guys support this because I think this is really a really big micro product of record. He's did some other records over the years, but this is probably, since it's an original song, closest we could get to that Urban Blues project stuff that he did. And I really think this is where the iconic thing of Michael Proctor is going to stay in his legacy and we have to build on that. So I really hope that people support this project, DJs, listeners, fans, new listeners, and... Don't buy my version. I, my favorite version, to be honest, is the Lenny Fontana version. My girlfriend asked me, which is your version, your favorite version out of all the ones? I said, Lenny Fontana. I love his version. The dub is just amazing. You know, even the DJ Spent version is great. The Long Max first version was awesome. But my favorite version is the Lenny Fontana version. Just okay, so we got it. And, and Tony, thank you. We're going to talk about that in a second. Thank you, Tony. Bob, we'll back to you in a second, then I'm going to bring on Keith, because Spen, I think, is having Wi-Fi issues, unless Spen's there. I want to ask him some questions. Spen, are you there? Can you talk? Spen? Hello? I think his mic is closed. Yeah. Might, Spen, your mic is... Uh, um, hey, Mike. Okay. Hey, Spen. So, we tried to get you before, and um, the Wi-Fi dropped on the train. Uh... Guys, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So yes. we, we were asking some questions. So what happened was with Bob, we said about okay. she had made a about coming to sending it to you guys the yeah, product the first time when it was in in demo stage. So when you got the demo of Michael, what was the initial reaction? Lenny, if you're talking, I can't hear you. I'm wondering if you can hear me. We can hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear us? <laughs> Can you hear me, Spence? Oh. Anyway, well, we're back to no. He's mute, but he can control his mic on his end. Can you hear us, Spence? Ben, are you there? Mission to spend. Mission control to spend. Don't know if you can hear me, but uh, yes. Spence involved. everything that Tony said. <laughs> Ben's over and he's coming in from 
Venus and he's passing Saturn right now. Mission Control to Spen, can you hear us? I don't think you can hear us. So we we'll go back to we're gonna we will look at him sooner or later. It'll clear up. Anyway, so Babu is controlling the ANRing and what ANRing is. That means she's getting the mixes and she is the controller in a sense, saying, I think this can be adjusted. I think, and she's really good at it. I have to give Babu a lot of credit. She's really good. She, she may not know the particular um, right words, but she gets her, her, her point across. So Babu said, I love Tony's mix. Lenny, what do you think? I says, look, it's a go for me. It's a go. Tony's did a great job. Tony's enthusiastic. Get him to finish it. So we're like, and then, of course, Spen, are you there? Can you hear us? Because Spen's mic is with the Wi-Fi. He's on the train. That's the problem. He can't hear us. Okay. His connection, Spen's connection is not so good. I just got from Karen. Mission control to Spen. We don't have no connection. So the, the rocket ship is flying over. Anyway, now we'll go. Now we're going to work towards my boy, Keith. Keith Kemper. Hey, Keith, how are you, man? Before I'm good. Keith. Keith's been working with me for a while now, and Keith's got a pretty good, strong history in the game, too. Um, Keith's a label owner, DJ. Uh, I'm not going to say, should say DJ, excuse me. Label owner, producer, AR, remixer, all, you know, as like all of us do, we handle different, different parts of our jobs now. But that's the way business is. Years ago, you used to be able to hand it off to someone and say, can you finish it or a record label will purchase it and they would take care of it. But now, these days, you're doing all the work. Yeah. So, Keith, of course, Keith played keys on this record and helped out and worked with me on some stuff. Can you tell people a little background about you and then we'll get into the mix and stuff? Yeah, sure. Um, well, it's funny because you and I know each other from my past, which is interesting. I worked at a label called Wacko Records many, many years ago. I don't know if anybody remembers it. We did a record uh, that kind of got some attention called Love Commandments that was produced by Louis Ballo. And I was the head, I was the engineer and the keyboard player for that as well. So my my history really stems from that onto what I've been doing. So yeah, I've been playing keyboards literally since I was seven years old, producing since 1990. Uh, my favorite style house was always house music. I got turned on to it the moment I heard it on a, a, a radio show overnight. And it was just, that was it. I got hooked on it. So when you pulled me into this project, um, I loved it because it, it brought me back to the past, literally brought me back to my roots working at Wacko. This would have been a record that Wacko would have put out because it's exactly that same style, Babu. And, um, of course, Lenny, you know, wanted me to put some the, the organ in there. I said, yeah, I, this is a, this is a no brainer, as you would say. And it was awesome. So I, and I didn't know anything about the Michael Broxer situation. He told me about it, Babu and Babu and, um, my, my condolences on that, but he was an amazing singer from what I heard. And unfortunately I wish I would have had the chance to work with him, but I never did. But this was the closest thing to working with him. So I, I appreciate, you know, Lenny bringing me onto the project. It was awesome. Yeah, well, well, first of all, and everybody heard this, but he worked on Giselle Jackson's Love Commandments. I want to make that clear. Because that one over everybody said, you got the love commandment in my heart. That was such a huge, huge huge house record of our scene. Everybody remembers that record. If you don't know it, Zell Jackson, Love Commandments, and of course, check out Keith Kemper's Facebook as well. He's got an album. He's got a lot of great stuff going on. And for me, of course, I always fish out some of the best talent. That's just the way I roll. Good people are good people. Okay, And I've been blessed to work with some amazing people. And Keith is one of those mad scientists that he could be very cranky and going, I don't like this, but look, I could do it this way. Go ahead, Keith, do it. Just do it. And Keith would just like go, bah, bah, da, 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 da. and he'll go, you really like that? And I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to even go excited. I'll go like this. It's all right. 
<laughs> well, going back to the famous record, Louis Bilo really deserves the credit. He was a genius. He was the first producer I knew that was literally willing to take the risk of pulling live musicians into the record. Literally, a live bass player, live conga player, me as keyboards, uh, a live guitar solo player, which solos at the end of the record. I've never heard of a, disc, uh, a house record that did that before. And he was actually the first person that actually introduced that. Um, and we were working on a shoestring budget at the label. We were what? literally... We were working yeah. on shoestring air. Literally. Air budget. Um, we were literally working with all MIDI, of course. There was a couple of modules. We only had three sound modules and, and Louis uh, doing all the vocals on an eight-track ADAT. And one track was used for sync. So we only had seven tracks for all the live instruments. So every instrument was one track at a time. And Giselle's vocal was on the lead vocal, was the final uh, track, which I think was seven. So we pulled it off. And that's the bottom line. We pulled it off. And, um, you know, so that's how I met Lenny. I met Lenny through Bob. Bob introduced me to Lenny years later. And then, you know, we've been working together ever since. And it's been awesome working with Lenny. Lenny, you pulled me literally back into the disco realm, working on the disco stuff. Danger, this is Robinson. Danger, I brought you back in. Danger, woo! Alert, alert, emergency. <laughs> but he, then, uh, uh, Tony, 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 Tony Graff, Felipe from the Village People. He's done a lot of disco stuff. Tony, he doesn't talk about it, but he's done a lot of disco stuff. So he, as far as Shirley Lights and that fire track, the string arranged me and, and wrote, escorted out, played it. So it was like, again, once again, people, you want a great keyboard player called Keith Kemper. He's that guy. You know what I'm saying? Tony, I, I heard your mix as uh, Lenny was playing it. It's a great mix. You did a great job. So I commend you. Tony Carrasco gets in a standing ovation, and people here are saying, Tony, you did great, brother. Fatello Tony. Very good, Tony. So, a little bit of our mix, just to let people hear what we did. Now we're going to play our mix. And I mean, before I play it, I just want to say this. At 2 o'clock in the morning, Babu called me and screaming on the phone. Lady! Lady! Oh, my God! Lenny! I, like, I, I love to do the reenactments. This is what next to the show. So, hey, Lenny, I love you. I can't take it out I'm like, Baba, what's the matter? I thought I did something wrong. I swear to God. She said, I thought the tears were like, I'm so disappointed. That's what I was expecting. Then I hear, wait a minute, let me pause. I need to get air. And then I hear her say, I have no words. I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, it's great. I can't handle it. I just can't handle this too much. I'm, I can't sleep now. The day's over. I'm ruined. And I said, okay, well, that's a good thing. Enough of that. I'll let it tell you in a minute. Let's go to the mix. Here we go. What can I say? Babu, come on, girl. You tell us. Yes. Keith, Keith Rock, the horn parts. He just rocked that stuff. <laughs> tell us, girl. Okay. Um, you know, it still, it still hits me this way. When you listen, when I listen to your remix, I can tell you without, like, it's one minute 32 when them keys drop in. And that's when I have to get up and I go off. I just cannot listen to these remixes without getting up and dance. But that moment when the, these keys hits, that's when you totally got me. And, you know, your your remix is very, it has that gospel touch because you got these organs in it and the horns and and it's just, you know, I was like, I can't sit still. And you, 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 we transferred me this 
um, this um, finished production at, like you said, at three in the morning, which, you know, that's like 10, in the, uh, 10 o'clock your time, but it was like late at night. I really couldn't sleep no more after that because I was so hyped. I was like, wow, and wow, and I listened to it again, and oh, my God, and, you know, I was up all night. It, it's just, it was just what I really wanted. You really, you, all you guys, like Booker T, Lomax. He did a great job, no doubt. He opened up the show. Tony Carrasco, Lenny Fontana, all you four, you really because you know you have these vocals, you have no music, and you have a certain thing in your mind what you want. Mm-hmm. So how am I going to explain a producer what I want? I can tell him, you know, I would like to have some keys, and I would like to have some horns, and I would like to. But it, it, I still have something I'm hearing, but I cannot put this in words. But you all, you guys, you absolutely nailed it. It was exactly what I wanted, and especially. It was, it's what Michael wanted. I know that Michael would be so proud of us. So proud of every, each of you. And, you know, we have our good friend, Tony Wilson, right? Carrasco, <laughs> the two T's, Tony Wilson. He yeah, did no, a Tony, lot of- let's be real, everybody. Does everybody love, love the Tony Wilson down in Miami? Tony Wilson. So let's we love you, Tony. Tony, wherever you are, let me let me say something about Tony Wilson. Tony Wilson's a true angel. He has championed house music for as long as I can remember. Even when house music wasn't fashionable, Tony kept it fashionable. Yes. You know what I'm saying, people? It's the kind of guy he is. This is about a movement. It's about a, it's truly. I don't know. I have nothing else to say. Tony's an angel. In every way. He's beat death numerous times. And he knows what I'm talking yeah. about. But he, when he hears a version, he calls you and says, yo, man. Yeah. That's just yeah. Oh, boy. You nail that shit, boy. Let <laughs> me get that. Tony, do you like it, Tony? Oh, no, man. That's just like, oh. I'm like, all right. Yeah. So, you know, you get certain people in your corner and they're giving you some love and you just know, you know. You called me and you had Babu on the phone and I was chatting with her. She was just ecstatic because the keyboard solo I did. Yeah. And again, um, it's pretty, again, with me, you know, I when I hear something, I just want to move. So once again, it was an awesome project to play on and I'm glad that you enjoyed it, Babu. And, um, you know, anything in the future, you got me. You're good. Yeah, I really, you know, Michael was a total key person. Michael absolutely loved it. Like, he was, you know, that's why I'm so happy with where this song was going and goes now, because I know it's exactly what he wanted. And to finish about Tony Wilson, which was Michael's best friend, and, um, you know, I always, Tony was the only one that always got the, the the productions from me to listen to. And when I dropped Lenny's first, because Lenny was done before Tony Carrasco, he was like, oh my God, just tell me when this is going to drop. I cannot wait. Can I play it now? I said, no, you need to wait. And then he heard Tony Carrasco's, but he was like, oh, yeah, send me this one too. It's going to be my next mix. And, you know, he was so, uh, and I, I count on his, um, opinion because for me he's one of the best soul for vocal house DJs ever like you know he got me into all this uh back in the days and um Tony Tony said something very sweet and also funny to me he was like you know I know Michael is so proud about all of you and I know he's having a big party up in heaven with all his people and he said even God is dancing <laughs> The so, Lord be having yeah. it at the dance floor. Yeah. So that's, you know, we really got there where I wanted to go. And that's all because of you guys. And I cannot thank you enough for everything you did, for everything you still do, for having my back and, and, and respecting Michael and showing him love. And it, that means that this is the most and the last project in my life. That's the most important I ever did. And it's the last one that I can do like we did. And 
You know, you, I couldn't have done none of that without you. I'm hoping you, you, you're welcome. And we all love you, Babu. I'm hoping that all of you executive himself, DJ Spank could speak. Um, you've all been hoodwinked, bamboos or run amok and let us stray by Amtrak's internet. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, um, um, it, it, it has been a pleasure to, um, be the home for a project like this. Um, especially, um, with, uh, you know, Lenny, it's, it's the first time you've done something. Owen Quantize and for it to come through. Um, no, is that true? Um, th- this, I think it is true. Yeah. yeah. And I, what a special thing for it to come through, you know, this Michael Proctor record. Um, like I said, um, Kelly and I were kind of roped into it from the very first lyric of the song. And um, it, it, it's just been, um, it, it's just been such a blessing. Um, for us to have a uh, Michael Proctor record of of this, what I'm going to say magnitude, because I expect big things from it. Um, and uh, I know that he's proud of everybody who's involved. Tony Carrasco, your mix is just really, really good. Um, it, it is excellent work um, as well um, as Booker T's version. And, um, you know, Booker kind of, you know, Booker and I kind of came up with a little bit of a different twist on his version um, just to kind of keep the momentum going. But yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, Lenny, your, your mix is my favorite one out of the whole thing on a package. And um, I just am really happy and pleased um, at uh, so far. The reaction has been really good. The, the comments have been really good. And, um, you know, to to just be involved with a record by a legend like Michael Proctor. That's right, a legend. Um, you know, and and it's just awesome. So that's pretty much what I have to say before this internet actually goes. That's all right. That's all right. We got it. We got it. We got you. We got you. Everything you said. You heard everybody. The, the executive man himself, DJ Spence, said it. The legend of Michael Proctor. Now I want to say this to Babu, Babu, and I'm going to speak yeah. for me, honey. We all love you. There was no way we could ever say no to you. But let me tell you what I was afraid of. I was afraid of letting you down when you came to me. I had so much. Look, I'm going to be real with you. You have a certain way of explaining how you want things to be. Okay. So here we go. You're saying, I want the moon, the stars, the earth. I want everything. And I want it like this. And I'm like, Yes. So when I'm with Keith and we're trucking and tracking, we went through three different things before you got to that. And I was scared to say, I kept saying, no, that, that's not going to work. And I'm being real now. Now I'm going to talk to the real side. Now I got the good side. Everybody loves what we did. Yeah, everybody loves it now. But when we were coming in and doing our thing, we were like, I can't let her down. This ain't about money. This is about, I got to do this right. It's got to be right from my heart. I got to give her everything I got and more because she's expecting the world from all of us. Because it's not because she's it, it's she's expecting it. This is what she, this is how she projects her way. She gives you everything she has when she tells you. And when she says she can't do it, trust me, she tells you, I can't do it. But if I can do it, she'll give you the world on a platter. So I was saying, and I know exactly what Tony was saying, the fear of, I don't know, I re- and, she was asking me, you sure you want? And I was like, kind of like, yeah, I'll do it. Like, really, like, hesitant about it? I was like, yeah. But I'm going to get my, my ass reamed if you don't like what I'm doing. Or, or, or if I want to try something a little different. She said, no, you do whatever you want. But it has to be like this. I love that. So you can do whatever you want. So I can make it like an opera record. I can make him sound like he's like an opera. Hey, hey, hey. I come back and just come back and go to me. No, no, Lenny, that's not what I was thinking. No disrespect, but you have to do it like this. Like you did that record and spread love. And just telling me all this crazy stuff. So out of all love and the joker that I am and class clown, of the 80s that everybody remembers me as always being the class clown. I had to share that insight. But in all truth, 
speaking. So when I'm looking at the phone and she's telling me this stuff, people, you have, you know, you're in a very important position. She's giving you gold. Now she wants platinum in a sense. She's giving you gold. She's saying, this is gold for me. Please shape this and make this into something gorgeous. Make it even better than what I can ever dream of. I can't explain how I want this, but you need to do what you do, okay? And do it right, basically. Or I'll kick your ass. I'll get on the plane. I'll come kick your ass. I'll come kick your asses. She was screaming at me. Tony's not finished. I'm going crazy. I can't. <laughs> I'm making the joke now. I'm making a joke now because we're at the end of the show. Tony, I'm going to kill him. She sounded like a manager. She sounded like a manager when I'm talking. She still had that. I am a goddamn manager. And I don't expect to be treated like this. I want this stuff done. Is he done yet? He's working towards it. But I can't scream at him because I love him. Tony, you hear me? Tony, I love you. <laughs> I can't scream at him. But I'm going to scream at you, Lenny, because I need to say something to somebody. <laughs> so that's the story, everybody. And Keith Cap heard me. Keith called me up, said, Did Mike finish the bass? I'm almost done. Mike it keeps asking, did you finish the parts? I said, dude, just let me sit with it for a few days because I can't give you an answer. Because Keith kept asking me, are we cool with it? I said, Keith, I don't know yet. So let me give you, you know, Keith's hearing me go back and forth with him going, um, he could call me. Dude, is it all right? I'm like, I don't know yet. I don't even want to play it for her yet. Cause I'm not sure. And he kept asking me, I said, just, just wait. I know what I'm doing. Let me play it again. Here we go. And of course, before I go back to talking, I want to make sure Tony Carrasco's his mix because his mix is just important. And Booker's, I don't oh, have Booker's oh, here, yeah. but that's all available. We're pushing these right now because these are on what we call pre-sale promos, and we need your help to push them up. That people is what you heard. Get on track source. <laughs> Buy the record once. Yes. Buy the record twice. Buy the record Support three once. times. Buy the record four times because you know what? It's a great Buy record. Times. Buy it ten times. Buy it a hundred times. Pass it to your friends. Tell your sister, your brother, your mother, your father. Tell everybody. Buy the record. Because you know what? And all kidding aside, everybody needs some support. The music is what it is. Yes, you can hear it streaming on Spotify. And all that stuff, but right now, we're trying to make this record be top of the charts. And the only way that's going to happen is it's going to be because of you all at home pushing that submit button to spend some little cash, little cash, a little bit, and buy your version that you like. It doesn't have to be mine or Tony's. Just get, or you can buy the whole package. Whatever you feel comfortable with, that's why we're here today. I did this special show because, again, I'm a fan of Tony Carrasco's. I love Babu. I'm close friends with DJ Spen. Keith Kemper is a great guy. I wanted to just share the love on a true house story. We are celebrating the life of Michael Proctor. And this is his last hurrah, the last song that came from the vault. Babu, one question that somebody asked was, did the background vocals exist or was that re-sung? Because people are asking, they're hearing background vocals. Or is that Michael at the time doing those backgrounds in the track? Babu? Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Michael always did his background vocals. He always did it himself. Always. Not, Michael never had any back background singers to his track. He did everything on his own. Okay. He was the lead singer. He did the background vocals. He did everything. All right. Yeah. 
All right. Well, that's that's on that note. I think Babu, is there anything else you need to tell us? Tony, everybody good? Keith, everybody's all right. I think we made our point. It's 90 degrees in New York City right now. It's going to be 3.30 and I'm actually going to get in the car. I'm going to go D see DJ Spend DJ in Brooklyn. I'm going. I'm gonna go with my nice. very short. And so I'm jealous. Take me and put it up. And you saw me at Spence gig because I'm going to see this man play. To I haven't been to anybody's parties in a long time. I so haven't been to no party since one year because no. of COVID. So we're going there. Keith, any projects you're working on right now that you you want to plug before you leave us? Well, yeah, I'm actually doing a disco Italia track with a friend of mine who I've been working with many, 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 many years online. We've never met. It's really interesting. The internet has changed the way we work now. Uh, his name is Nivek Tech. He works for a company called ISV Entertainment. And um, basically, he's been retired. He has ceased stopped doing the music because he's doing other things now. But I decided I wanted to pull him in on this one project. I knew his voice was perfect for it. It's called Lover. And we've been using uh, a video campaign. <clears throat> if anybody out there wants to join, they're, they're more than welcome. They can just record the chorus, the lyric, and the melody is there. And it's just a good way to promo it. Um, it's basically a personal story that he wrote. And it all came from a baseline that I created. And then the next thing you know, the whole thing came into a full production. It's now literally sounds like something you would hear from back in 82. It literally has all the elements. And it, I love the 80s. Of course, everybody in this room has to love the 80s. It's the best generation of music we ever had. And it was a, it was nice to work on something that's totally original but still has the 80s feel. So that's that's in the works right now. I'm actually going to work on that. Thank you for your on True House Stories. You know, and before I let Tony go, I want to make sure Tony. Tony, you're right now in Italy, bro, right? You were you were in America. I know you were in Miami. Hey, what's what's the plans forward? Because I know Italy's going through some heavy times right now with COVID and everything. So what are you what's what's on your plate? Wait a minute. Hold on, Tony. Sorry, let's unmute you. Go ahead. Yeah, I gotta go to London because I'm I gotta finish up another record I'm working on. So that was really the reason why I came back here. Uh, but I'll be I should be back home hopefully at the end of June or sometime mid May mid July, no later than that. And um, I'm just trying to finish up a record. So I'm just looking out for a female vocalist. I already did the arrangement and everything. So that's something that I got to conclude before I you know, get back home and then finish a mix of another record. If you need a remix, Lenny, holler. <laughs> Tony, we love you, bro. Come on. <laughs> love me too. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you all the time. Now I'm going to be harassed. Cool, uh, Cool, cool. I'm going to be harassed. You're part of the alumni yeah. of Two House Stories. <laughs> great, great. Thank you, Tony. And Thank you. You're welcome, brother. Thank you. I want to say hello to my lovely queen, Babu. I love you. Say hello to the girls and your daughter for me, please. Yes. I'll talk to you. Of course. Tony, thank you. And Babu, please tell us anything else that we need to know because I think I'm all talked out. People are tired. Okay. Um, what you need to know is that we made it to the charts with all three remixes. That's so all I was in the charts. Lenny from Tana is in the charts. And so we spent a book in the charts. But we want to climb and rise up. So please support us. Go on track source. Get the remixes. The remixes. It's just $1.99. If you don't have $1.99 to track, to download a good, good, good song on track source, then I have nothing else to say. And, um, <laughs> you know, um, and also, uh, Tony, we got some work to do because I want you to do that Rise Up remix for Michael. Oh. Yeah. But, you know, I'm really happy with everything is going and I'm very thankful for everything you do, Lenny, to, you know, bring us on your True House Story show that we watch every Wednesday anyway, because it's the bump, <laughs> you know, but you put so much effort in everything and, and you you support us. And I'm really thankful to just know you also as a friend, not only as, you know, this project, like, you know, I know you way back in the days I was in your house. Oh, hang on, Babu, um, Babu. Yes. Babu, like I did to Michael Gray. We do the same to you because this is a special moment. We share something that I gave to Babu at present when she was here in yes. 
Babu, go run to bring the present to show everybody what you had got. It's not here. Oh, okay, so I can't do no, it. No, it's in my daughter's house. Oh. Yes. I went to New York in 2019, and, um, you know, uh, we had something going on business-wise with music and everything, and so um, we drove out to Lenny's studio. And I was like, wow, that studio is amazing. I was, it's right there, right? <laughs> it's right behind you. <laughs> yes. So, you know, we were talking and then, you know, we were talking about music and then, of course, about New York because it's my favorite city in the whole wide world. I know it and is. And we were talking about Paradise Garage. It was my first time I went to a club in New York, was Paradise Garage. And then you were like, okay, wait a minute. I got some something real special, but I didn't know who he's going to get because I keep it by side for really special people. I'm like, what is he talking about? So he left. And I was really like, mm, I'm really, now I'm excited. I want to know what it is. And he comes back with a brick. I'm like, why a brick? I didn't really know. I, I was like, did you just go to the club and bring your brick? That brick? He was man. like, Babu, this is the most special brick you could ever hold in your hands. And I said, why? He said, this is a piece of the Paradise Garage wall. And I almost passed out. I was like, oh my God, really? He said, yeah, I got a few pieces. And I, you know, I just don't give them away like this. I give it to special people. And I said, so I can have one. And he, he was like, yeah. I said, you need to sign it. I want to have something on there written from you. So it was really something so, so deep like this. I will never forget that because I know it's very special also for him. It has a special meaning for him too. And then I went back to the hotel. I'm like, how am I going to get this brick on the plane. <laughs> I was like, did we just had 9-11 a few years ago? I don't know what they're going to do if they search my bag and I'm coming with a big brick. <laughs> but eventually everything was okay. They didn't even, you know, I was, I didn't put it in my handbag, of course. I had it in the luggage, but it was okay. But I was really, I was kind of scared. I was a little nervous when I went to the airport. But, you know, this this means a lot to me. Like, it really means a lot. And um, I had it in my house. And then, you know, my grandkids come over and they start playing with it. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not a break just to, to, just to throw around. And so my daughter, she has a big, um, um, I don't know how you say that. You call cabinet. That a cabinet. Cabinet with windows that you really have only very special and expensive stuff. And then I said, this break needs to be there. It's like a trophy, you know, because I, I'm not, my apartment is not built like that. So it's by her. It's, uh, I just, I just been there before the interview actually. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm asking myself if, if Lenny is going to talk about the break and look, here we are. <laughs> That's what I told her before. True house. See, now that, that's what this is the true, real true house story. This is what we do. Yeah. So yes. you said about true house story. They said, then you're going to tell the true yes. house story. And then I met your beautiful wife that night. And, you know, she, she welcomed us. It's like, it's not only about the music. And it's the same with Tony. Like Tony and I, we're family. I mean, he knows my daughter since, since, since she's five. You know, Michael had a show in a, in a, he had a, a live interview in a radio station. And after that, we went to play at the gate with Tony. And so we went to have pizza with the guys from the radio station. And I went there with my daughter and she sat on Tony's lap and we were laughing and making jokes. She was five, six years old. So, you know, and I know you since years. So this is not just music and, you know, passion and Michael. It's just really, I consider this family. That's right. That's exactly it. Yeah. And Tony, 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 Tony Wilson, Lomax, we're family, you know. Like when Terry Hunter yeah. writes to me, goes house fam. And yes. it's so true. It's fam. Yes, it's fam. Yo, what's up, fam? It's just like that. Yes. The music shows no color, no creed, no. no. It's all about the music. It's yes. always like that. And then with the music, we extend our 
our ways, but the music is what brings everyone together. And on that note, everyone, please enjoy your Sunday. Help yes. us make Babu's project a very memorable project and support her. Send her your love. Send her your hearts. Send her whatever you want to know. And also hit her up on Babu's house on, on Facebook, on the group page. Yes, join my group. There's a lot of good music in my group. A lot of good producers and music. A lot DJs. of great DJs. A lot of great stuff. And of course, Tony Carrasco, one more time. Thank you, brother man. I know it's getting late. Thank you, Tony. Keith Kemper. Keep doing Thank what you, you do, brother. We got more projects and more stuff to do. And yes. I am Money Fontana. And one last thing. This coming Wednesday, we got Hippie Torales. Yes, Hippie's the man. Hip what is it, baby? Hippie Torales. Tune in this Wednesday. And it's going to be it for me. Two o'clock New York City time. Seven o'clock UK time. Eight o'clock European time. On that note, take care. Have a good night, everyone. Enjoy your Sundays. Be safe.